Hey guys, we are about to jump into a line of figures that I'd say are easily one of my most anticipated for the entire year. Something that I have been looking forward to since they were announced and just something that kind of signals a return for this particular property. We are taking a look at the first of the Power Rangers Lightning Collection from Hasbro. We have got Mighty Morphin White up for review today. Uh, I couldn't not start with White Ranger. It's kind of the flagship figure for the line right now, and I'm really, really excited to take a look at this. The figure looks fantastic, but even just the presentation on these figures from a packaging standpoint is amazing. They very much are going for a nice, clean aesthetic, almost figure arts in its style. So you've got this uh, figure here in the window. We've got some nice artwork of the White Ranger that wraps around the front onto the side with the Power Rangers Lightning Collection logo down on the bottom. And then the back of the package is just, again, really clean with a shot of the Ranger with the lightning bolt and then that same kind of gold yellow color that wraps around from the front. So let's do it. Let's pull this guy out and take a look. All right, and here he is out of the package our Lightning Collection White Ranger. And this is something that, frankly, I have been very much looking forward to since we had the news that Hasbro was taking over Power Rangers in its entirety. We knew right off the bat we were getting collector-style figures, and I was one who, when Bandai released their Legacy Collection, I was very much on board until I got them in hand, and they just never lived up to my expectations. So this is kind of a redo for collector-based domestic Ranger figures. This guy, I'm not so sure will ever really replace my love for my Sentai figure arts, but this is, by all accounts, an amazing figure, and Hasbro is just killing it with this line, to say the least. So I'm really, really happy to dig into this one. So let's get right to it. Let's take a look at articulation and see what this guy can do, because he is implementing some stuff that, honestly, I wish we would see pretty much across the board with Hasbro's products, and I think this entire line is this way, too. So we'll start at the head as usual. He can go backwards pretty far. Down a good click, I'd say, there. It's not perfect. He does, of course, hit the chest armor, the shield, just a little bit but he still can look pretty far down. Rotate side to side, of course. Arms go out. You can rotate them all the way around. He does have a butterfly joint in there to help maneuver around that armor. You've got a bicep swivel. You've got double jointed elbows. You have got rotation and hinge at the wrist. We have got an upper diaphragm twist here, so twist at the, uh, the pecs, basically, side to side, back and forth, and an ab crunch. So he goes you know, all the way over, which is just fantastic. Legs go out, they kick forward. You don't get too much on the back, but it's decent enough. You've got a thigh cut in there, double jointed knees. And then of course we've got a boot cut, we've got rocker, and we've got hinges down at the ankles. So for all intents and purposes, I'd say as far as what you're gonna get from Hasbro, this thing is as articulated or more than articulated than just about anybody expected. I think they've absolutely killed it with posability, with movability, everything about how this guy moves and the joint structure that they've chosen for this line is absolutely doing it for me. Now, when it comes to the overall look, the feel, the design of this figure, as much as they have absolutely killed it on articulation, I think they've done an equally fantastic job with the sculpt on this figure. The paint has a little, a little bit of maybe some growing pains here and there. I do see some inconsistencies in paint across a lot of these figures so far that I've seen in person, and of course the ones that I've owned. Uh, I've only got maybe one real gripe about this particular figure, but it's not too crazy. And honestly, I really dig the way this figure looks. And I think one of the interesting things they've done with this figure, with this line, is that they have made these figures look like they're actually wearing suits. So it's pretty common to get Power Ranger figures that they're just flat plastic. These figures are not. They have wrinkles sculpted into the actual, you know, the spandex suits. And as somebody who has owned and worn these kinds of suits before, uh, you know, because I have I've done a number of Power Ranger cosplays in, in my day, they do bunch up, they do have wrinkles, they do have little parts that kind of lift and flow on them, and they do, they do that really well, especially when it comes to the boots. So you've got spots here like on the shoulders, a little bit down here on the waist, at the thighs, around the knees, and then even the boots, which you know are kind of like leather, faux leather style boots, they will kind of cinch in on the ankles. So they've gone almost a very realistic, what it looks like in the show in many respects, to show that it's not just a white body, 
it's a white body suit, which I really like, and it adds some texture and it adds some ways for light to hit them, capture some shadow, which just works for me. It very much is just a little bit of a departure from other Power Ranger figures, and I like that. The difference is minimal, but it's noticeable. Beyond that, the figure is, for the most part, cast in uh, just white plastic, obviously. He's a white ranger, so he's going to be white plastic. You do have uh, metallic gold paint, which is thankfully quite metallic. I really like it. And you've got the black bands for the cuffs on the boots and on the wrists. And then you've got the gold bands on his, uh, what are really like the second sleeves that sit over top of this particular suit. Not to mention the fact that we've got the belt with the holster for Saba. And then you've got the actual uh, tiger shield that sits on his chest, the armor piece, which is kind of a rubbery plastic. And it kind of moves with him because, you know, this is a separate piece as far as the suit is concerned as well. So you've got the black with that kind of uh, darkish metallic gold that's painted on there. So I really, really like it. And then, of course, you've got the, the white tiger emblem that's emblazoned in the center of the armor. Just everything about the way the figure looks is nicely done. You've got the ridges that are on the boots. You've got the ridges that run across the gloves as well. So all those small details are nicely done. They are attended to pretty well when it comes to the way this suit is designed and translated into plastic. I'd say the helmet is equally as impressive as well, save for the fact that, you know, maybe the one thing that you're never really going to get are uh, helmet clasps that run along the side. And I could swear that the prototypes for this figure actually showed it, but it was kind of unrealistic to expect to get something like that. So that would be a nitpicky thing at best. But otherwise, the design is fantastic. It feels a little soft in terms of the plastics used. I'm not sure if it truly is or if it's just me noticing maybe something that isn't really there. But it does feel kind of soft. Otherwise, though, I mean, the paint is on point here. The sculpt is on point. You've got all the ridges that run down the sides of the helmet from the forehead down, the black visor, the nice gold paint, the silver mouthpiece. It all just looks very, very nice very nicely done. Uh, the only thing I've really got wrong here, I've got a little bit of a nick on the back of the helmet, which I'll be able to just kind of rub right off. It's not a big deal, but we had to leave it on there for the sake of review because that's how this guy came out of the box. Otherwise, though, I think the helmet sculpt for this figure is top-notch and exactly in line with the rest of this body. Now, as far as accessories, this is where things kind of branch out a bit and give us things that, frankly, we've never really gotten before when it comes to Power Ranger toys. So obviously, I've already changed them up a bit. So one of the key things with this line, and one of the key differentiating factors with what they're doing with the Lightning Collection in general, is that we are getting unhelmeted heads for what I can only assume is every single Ranger that they're going to do. So we've got a Jason David Frank uh, head here. We've got a Tommy Oliver head. And we do, of course, have the photo real tech that's employed here. So this is a Tommy with a ponytail. It's it's pretty good. I can definitely see a young Jason David Frank in this. The, the sculpt is kind of soft in some ways, but the photo reel does help with it. It is kind of a waxy head, though. And especially under these lights, it's probably worse than it might be just, you know, on your normal shelf, but it is kind of waxy. Otherwise, though, I think it looks nice. My paint applications are really well done. I don't have any problems there. And it's just the fact that we're getting this kind of stuff. So, you know, the fact that we have it alone is a huge step up from just about anything ever when it comes to Power Rangers. I mean, we don't get this kind of stuff from Bandai. We only ever really had those flip heads and then other non-good toys. Beyond that, though, we do have a couple extra hands here. So we've got some fist hands to replace the gripping hand and the uh, like karate chop style pose hand. And then we have got Saba. So this sword is pretty nicely done. You've got a lot of paint apps on it. You've got the tiger coin. You've got the blade. It's not extendable or retractable, so it's what you see is what you get here. You've got the nice uh, you know, Saba's tiger head up here at the top. Mine is missing some gold paint on the right side, so there should be some gold here on his cheek. I'll have to see about fixing that myself. But you've got a really, really good sculpt here and a lot of paint work on this guy. Uh, of course, mine's just missing that one. And he can hold this in his right hand only. That's the only gripping hand he has. And then the other final accessory we have is an energy effect, which I think is pretty cool. It's more of like a, uh, you know, like an energy reflection blast almost. So something like is hitting the sword, you pop it on the end there, it's got a little slit. You stick the blade in there and you can have him kind of like deflecting a laser blast or something like that, uh, which I think is really cool. Just the idea of getting stuff like this again, uh, giving us a very rounded out package for these figures is an absolute selling point, especially when you consider that these things are still only 20 bucks.
Now, of course, we have to do a comparison, and these are the only two Rangers that I had readily available for this recording. So we've got our figure arts here on the left, and we've got our Bandai here on the right, and we've got our brand new Hasbro Ranger there in the middle. And you can see there's obviously a scale difference, so we've got a pretty small, slender, very Japanese aesthetic for the figure arts. And then you've got your bulky, larger scale to begin with, uh, Bandai figure, which was always the kind of Americanized, uh, overly muscled Power Ranger kind of thing. I would say that, you know, there is just no contest for me really when it comes to these figures. The Hasbro is just night and day improvement over anything Bandai ever gave us. I don't think that the Lightning Collection figures are really going to replace my figure arts because I have a very nice contained collection for those. And I was a huge supporter and I've got really fond memories of that particular line and I wish it never ended. But if, you know, someone who's been on the fence, maybe not wanting to spend the money on some of these figures, then there's just no reason to anymore. You just instantly go with the Hasbro figures because they are fantastic entries into Power Ranger toy collecting. And they are an exceptional upgrade to anything we ever got from Bandai America. When you've got them next to each other, there's just really no contest. So this is a home run. There's really no other way to describe it. This figure is exactly what Power Ranger collecting fandom has needed for a while. This thing blows away anything Bandai of America has ever given us, and I think it's a great example of how hard Hasbro is going to push with this particular uh, series, with this line of figures. They sh they're showing us right out of the gate that they are serious about it, that they're throwing down and they want people to have these figures and want them to be as good as they can be, because this is an exceptionally fun toy to pose around, fun to play with. He's got a bunch of awesome accessories that a lot of folks probably didn't expect to be getting. It's stuff we've never gotten before for Rangers, so it's a huge shift in what we will be getting. And I think Hasbro has done an exceptional job with this particular quote unquote flagship Ranger to show us what is possible. I was already on board with these figures, even without ever having seen them in person, but having them in hand has solidified the fact that we are getting arguably the best Power Ranger figures that are readily available at you know any time in history. So it's a good time to be a Power Ranger fan, basically. So that's going to do it for this look at the Hasbro Power Ranger Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin White Ranger. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.